If the defendants can please stand. For purposes of the record, I have reviewed all of the exhibits that were admitted. In the punishment phase of this case, I have reviewed the pre-sentence investigation report and the TAP evaluation of each of the defendants. Is there any legal reason we cannot proceed to sentencing today? Not on behalf of Mr. Whatever Your Honor. Does it have Mr. Schneider? No, sir. Yes, and Mr. Um, Mr. Rodriguez could not be here, right? Yes, Judge. Dennis and, Moreno standing in here. Yes, Mr. Moreno. Any objection or do you want to proceed with Mr. Moreno, Ms. Schneider? Okay. What happened to Mr. Najera was an unspeakable horror that is going to resonate in our community for a very long time. Unlike any other cases I have presided over, this one is different. It is different because we're not dealing with an intentional act. We're not dealing with a drive-by shooting or any other type of murder. It was a case of criminally negligent behavior. On the one hand, we have the city of San Antonio Animal Care Services swearing under oath, giving testimony that left me with the impression that this was about a missing affidavit, that none of the previous bite victims came forward to declare the dogs dangerous dogs. After hearing from the neighbors on Dethla and Darby Street, I find the testimony I heard from the city of San Antonio very difficult to believe. What I do believe is the people from the West Side neighborhood. I find the testimony of David Avila, Fernanda Esparza, Deborah Flores, Silvia Avila, not only credible, but very persuasive and compelling. The city of San Antonio is not on trial here and they will have their day in court and their lawsuit to contend with. But about this case, what I do have to say is that it's not about a missing affidavit. <coughs> Clearly, our city has a lot of work to do to provide services to deal with responsible dog ownership. To echo what most, if not all, the witnesses testified to, this was preventable. If the first line of defense fails because the dog owners are not responsible, the second line of defense should not have failed. Mr. Moreno, Ms. Schneider, this is about responsible dog ownership. It involves not only taking care of your dog, but ensuring the safety of the people in our neighborhoods, in our communities, not only the people, but other pets in the neighborhood and communities. We all have that responsibility to each other, and you failed at that. Mr. Moreno, it is the order of the court that you will be sentenced to 18 years confinement in the Texas Department of Criminal Justice Institutional Division. There is a $5,000 fine, no restitution. The victim has not requested restitution. You are prohibited from owning or possessing any dogs if you make parole on this case. This is a plea bargain case. However, um, you have the right to appeal the rulings of the court on a pretrial order. Ms. Schneider, your sentence is 15 years confinement in the Texas Department of Criminal Justice Institutional Division. There is a $5,000 fine, no restitution because Ms. Najera does not want it. You two are prohibited from owning or possessing any dogs if you make parole. Both of you are also ordered to have no contact with Debla Street and Darby Street. Yours is also a plea bargain case. However, you have the right to appeal the rulings, of pretrial rulings of the court. Do we have any impact statements? We do, Your Honor. Line them all up, and let's get started. You're remanded to the custody of the sheriff to begin your sentence.
My name is Juanita G. Najera. I am the widow of Ramon Najera. I would have never imagined that I would be calling myself a widow at this time of my life and in this tragic way. PTSD is now something I will have to deal with the rest of my life. Extreme loneliness and emptiness will also be a part of my life. You both took a big part of my life away. You <laughs> took my better half away. <laughs> when my husband was brutally and unexpectedly taken from me, I was blessed to have my, my daughter, Anna, she lives here in San Antonio. She took me into her home and took care of me. She would help me bathe. She would feed me, take me to my appointments. And you know why I needed all that help? Because when your dog attacked me, I could hardly walk. My whole body would tremble. I could hardly get out of bed without any help. I had to have help every day. My son, Carlos, a retired Marine, he had to put his life on hold. His family, he had to come down and take care of me. All my financial needs, he helped me with everything. He also provided meals for me. To this day, my daughter, Anna, she's still helping me. And my son, even if he's in San Diego, he calls me. He calls me every day to find out how I'm doing. It's been hard for me to depend on their help for whatever I need from going to court, doctor's appointments, and other needs. My son, in California, he still calls me and keeps in touch with me. It's been hard for me. I found myself feeling so depressed and weak when they had to leave me. I remember saying goodbye to my son when he left, and I held on to him, and I cried. And it broke his heart to leave me behind. But he had a family to take care of uh, and a job. And being with me two months, he took off to be with me. <laughs> my daughter, Lily, she also took part. She took care of me. She would clean my house. My son, Ramon, he would take care of the yard for me. All of them during this critical time have helped me so much. All of them have felt the stress that you guys caused on us. And it, you know, you already got your sentencing, but you, you have left an everlasting impact in our lives. <laughs> you took you took my husband's life. I feel that you are serving what you deserve for the crime you committed. Indirectly, it happened that you could have prevented it. You could have done something. You could have realized that those dogs needed to be put down. And I think you got the adequate punishment. And right now, there's somebody that should be sitting right there next to you guys. And it should be the city. The city should be there sitting next to you guys because they are guilty too. And I'm glad 
the judgments. And I know that the Lord was with you when you made this decision, and it was hard for you too. But I thank you. <laughs> To Christian and Abilene, our father would still be here if it were not for your combined acts of omission and conscious indifference. Your disregard for caring neighbors, defiance against public safety, and other public servants contributed to this horrific death, causing great pain to our family. I have not yet heard from you that as you said that I'm sorry to our family. You are unremorseful, disgusting individuals. Disrespectful, you don't deserve to be released as free people in our city. Your negligence with dogs has horrified the senses locally, nationally, and around the world. It was your duty to take care of these dogs. Consider the safety of your neighbors. Using the common sense as pet owners, you should have controlled your dogs on a daily basis. Clearly, you train these dogs because they responded immediately to your commands after they attacked my dad. Also giving common sense, they were trained at some level to fight. And that was your doing. My father, Ramon Najera, and his wife, Janie, did not deserve this cruel and gruesome experience that ultimately ripped my father from our family. My father had easily 20 years of life to live yet. That's all I have. <laughs>